So before we head to Deuteronomy chapter 32, the Song of Moses, let's run our Bibles to Revelation 15, 3 again. Revelation 15, 3. Now this song we're looking at Moses, we were told in the previous chapter, is a warning. I'm Jude. Uh, Revelation 15, 3. It's a warn warning to the children of Israel to stay with God. And be obedient to God. In 15.1. And I saw another angel. I, I mean I saw another sign in heaven. Great and marvelous. Seven angels. Having the seven last plagues. For in them is still the wrath of God. That's interesting. We're in the time of Jacob's trouble. And we are looking at the wrath of God. And I saw as it were a sea of glass. Mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast. Tribulation period. Antichrist. And over his image. And over his mark. 666. Over the number of his name. 666. Stand on the sea of glass. Got to be like mirror like. Having the harps of God. There's where the harps come from. The harps are given to angels. We're not good. we're not angels. We are the bride of Jesus Christ. So when you get the picture of saints up there on a the cloud with a harp, you got it all wrong. And they sing the the song of Moses. So there are remnant in the tribulation period Jewish people that will have harps. That have gotten the victory over the mark, got victory over the name of the Antichrist, and they will sing the song of Moses, which we're going to look at tonight. The servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, capital L, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou king of the saints, of the Jewish saints. He's never king of the church. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at angels and we're looking at Jewish people who have come out of the tribulation period, probably been beheaded by death. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name. And thou art thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. And that's the song of the Lord. The Lord God, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world for the Jewish raiment. There will be Jews, and there are Jews, that will worship the Lord Jesus Christ. And there will be two song, songs sung. The Song of Moses, and the Song of the Lamb. Now tonight, Deuteronomy, 29, Deuteronomy 32, I keep on to say 30, 29 and 28. Deuteronomy 32 is the song of Moses. And it's about God. And it's about the nation of Israel. And there are some nations in there. And there is rebellion against God. Give ear. Listen up, O ye heavens. That's interesting. Because the Bible speaks about powers and principalities are in the heavens and the Listen up, you powers and principalities, the devil and his workers, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, people on the earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine, the teaching, shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, pure droplets of water in the morning. As the small rain upon the tender herb. And as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord. Didn't you see the name over in Revelation? I will publish the name of the Lord. Proclaim God, Jesus Christ, Almighty. A scribe, that's the first time that word shows up. Ye greatness unto our God. He is the capital R, Rock. This is a rock that fed Israel the water in the wilderness. His work is perfect. And that would be 100%. Other times when it speaks about the word perfect as far as a man, a human, 
It's the best to your ability. But when that perfect is ascribed to God, that's 100%. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, that capital rock, uh, capital R rock. Paul says it's Jesus Christ in the book of Corinthians. And when Jesus with that says, I'm the truth and a God of truth, Jesus is God and God is Jesus. The lamb that we saw in Revelation chapter 15. And without iniquity, Jesus Christ and God just and right is he righteousness they have corrupted themselves now that's not god god is without iniquity god is without sin so now we've got to be looking at a different day their spot is not the spot of his children that'd be god's children they are perverse and crooked first time that word shows up generation well, look at the first time that word that crooked shows up it's not you know a, a road that's all turned it's not a rod that's all bent it's talking about a generation a people crooked do ye thus requite the lord oh foolish people and unwise <laughs> no you're foolish you're unwise is not he thy father that has brought thee has he not made thee and established thee? Now look at that, Father. There's God the Father. Did he not make you creator? Talking to a bunch of people that acknowledge God as creator. Then establish them to be somebody. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, that's your human father, and he will show thee. Thy elders, your rulers, they will tell, they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance. Oh, so the nations are divided by God and the world is trying to get them together in unity. That happened back in Genesis with the Tower of Babel and God says, get out of here, split up. I'll give you different languages. The nations were never to be brought together in our sinful condition that we are. When he separated the sons of Aaron, I'm assuming the sons of Adam. He put a division between them. One son went the way of Satan. The other son went the way of righteousness and God. He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. So when you're going to draw out a map of the world. God says you put 12 divisions in it. Because the children of Israel are 12. And there would be a 13th nation that would be Israel, the nation of all nations. So there are divisions among people. For the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob. And that's who we're talking about now, Israel, Jacob. The father of the 12 tribes of Israel is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land. And in the waste howling wilderness. And Jacob was running from his brother. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of thy eye. That's the first time apple shows up. Some people think apple shows up first time in Genesis 3. No. And it's not even the fruit. It's that expression. You hear, you're the apple of my eye. Well, who's the first time it's talking about? It's talking about a man named Jacob. As an eagle stirs up her nest and floodeth over her young, spreads aboard her wings, taketh them, and beareth them upon her wings. Now, that illustration there is wonderful. We got a long chapter tonight. And what happens with a mother eagle? When she's got her young in the nest, and what she'll do is she'll take her wings and she'll flap them as hard and as fast as she can. And will take those eaglets and they will fall out of that nest. And as they're falling, because an eagle's way up as high as all the birds can ever go. 
Those eaglets, they're flying, they're flapping, they're trying to do everything they do. And before they fall and crash, mother picks them up and brings them back to the nest. And she keeps doing this to the day that those eaglets have strong muscles in their wings and have enough feathers that one day they just fly, take off, and then they go start their own family. God kept dropping them and picking them up, putting them back as a mother eagle would do. Strengthen them. You know, God said he, he led them through the wilderness. He didn't take them north to the sea of reed because he said he needed to build them up. He needed to strengthen them. He needed to get them built up because they would not have been ready to go into the promised land. And he strengthened them. Verse 12, So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. It was God the Father, God Jehovah. God of Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob. He made him ride on high places of the earth. There's a good high place. That he might eat the increase of the fields, food. He might he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of flinty rock. That's that rock. That's that capital R rock. That was a flinty rock that gave water that fell that fed all of Israel. And it looked like it may have fed Jacob too. If not, that reference is to the children of Jacob. Butter of kind. But there's butter in the Bible. Milk of sheep. The fat of lambs. And rams of, rams of the breed of Bashan. And goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat. Thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. That's grape juice. That is fresh squeezed grape, grape juice. It has not been fermented. Pure blood of the grape in the Bible, that is new wine. But Jeshurim, that's another name, poetic, poetic name of Israel, wax fat and kicked, rebelled. You got fat, you got so many blessings. Thou art waxing fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock, capital R, of his salvation. That's Jesus Christ. That is the nation of Israel rejecting Jesus Christ, who is the salvation. And the God of the wilderness and the God of Joshua that went in and gave them the land. They got so fat in that land. Judges says, and you know, they had no king and every man there was right in his own eyes without God. They provoke him, God, to jealousy, which we've read about in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. You don't get God jealous with strange gods. With abominations provoke they him to anger and that was Deuteronomy 28 and 29 remember this is a song and you don't want me to sing they sacrifice unto devils they were demons so when Jesus Christ came they were devil possessed That one man, of, uh, 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 he had a legion of devils in him. Not to God. To God, small G-O-D-S, whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up. Whom your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, twelve tribes, feared not. So here's a whole new class of gods Israel has taken on. And their name in Jeremiah, Esther, Baal. And there are even new gods, even more new gods. They took that, that serpent that Moses made in the wilderness and they gave it a name and served it as God. Of the rock, capital R, that begat thee. Wow, Jesus Christ, thou art mindful and has forgotten God that formed thee. They replaced God with gods. And when the Lord saw it, 
He abhorred extreme hatred them because of the prov provoking of his sons and of his daughters. They got worse and worse as the generation got on. And he said, I will hide my face from them. That's God speaking. I will see what their end shall be. For they are very forward. That's wicked generation. So we have back here, we have a crooked generation. Now we've gone to a forward. We've got worse generation. The church doesn't get better. You say, you're reading about the children of Israel. Yeah, but we're following the saints too. There is no evolution. It does not get better. Children in whom is no faith. That's America right now without fear. Jesus Christ has been preaching. No one cares. No one has faith in Jesus. Very little. Very minor. They've got all kinds of gods. How many sport teams are there? How many male and female actresses and singers are there? There are gods. There are pictures in, the, in people's uh, houses, in their dens, in their man cave. There are all kinds of emblems. There's all kinds of signs. There's all kinds of things that are of value of money. And you sell them and you collect them and you buy and you bid for them. There are television shows all about that mess. And give God the time, give God something, and they mock it. We, we watched a program last night, and there was a pulpit, and they started mocking, oh, I'll be the preacher, and hallelujah, glory to God. And then there's all kinds of great coins and great stuff, and look how much money we got and stuff like that. We're doing Deuteronomy 32. Right here. Nothing new under the sun, I think a famous wise king of God said. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. Now, if Judah did that, if Israel did that, what do you think happens in the churches today when they move to something that's not God and allows it in the church? And we are the bride of Jesus Christ and we go a whoring after the world and we go sleeping with Satan. What do you think our groom, our savior thinks when we do that mess? He's jealous. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. Nothing. Worthlessness. That's what vanities is. Nothing. I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. Gentiles. In the eyes of the Jews, the Gentiles are just scum. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. There's the church age in verse 21. That not a people, that foolish nation are Gentiles turning to God, getting right by God, by their Messiah, Jesus Christ. I am a not a people, and I am a foolish nation. In the, but I'm a child of God now. You know what the Jews think of that? Oh, you're a liar. You're just following a man. It ain't true. Words to the people. You know, when you read the Jew Isaiah 53, they think it's about their nation. And the one that's causing the harm to their nation, the iniquity and all that, is the Gentiles. To them, it's not about Jesus Christ and our sins. It's the Gentiles' treatment of the Jews. They even go far as Genesis 3.15, when, when God's talking to that woman about the serpent, and the, the, he says to the serpent, the woman's seed, they believe that's the Jews, and they speak of the serpent's seed, they think that's the Gentiles. And God says, okay, fine, you won't believe on me? I'll take those wicked people, as Jonah didn't like, as Peter didn't like, I'll have them turn to me. And then they'll go out telling you about Jesus. They'll go about telling you what God expects. For a fire is kindled in my anger. That's hell. And Jesus said that fire was kindled for Satan and his angels. But man fell in sin and shall burn in unto the lowest hell. Moses preached about hell. There it is. Jesus never preached about hell. Yes, he did. So did Moses. It's in the law. Hell is in the law. There it is. 
It's in the Song of Solomon. And shall consume the earth with her increase. So according to that, hell is just going to get so it's going to consume. The Bible says heaven and earth will flee. Death and hell will cast those that are in them in, uh, before God, the great white throne judgment. And death and hell will be cast in the lake of fire with her increase. It grows more and more. How many people died today? And how many of those people died and went into hell? It's growing. Set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Uh, let's go to Jonah. That's a good one. I just saw that right now. Jonah. Where's Jonah? Jonah chapter 2. I mark that one down. Jonah chapter 2. I think it's 2. Jonah 2 verse number 2. Is that the one that says mountains? The place where he says mountain. Six. Okay, two and six. Jonah two, two and six. And said, I cry by the reason of my affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I. Jonah's not preaching about hell. And thou heardest my voice. Verse six. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was round about me forever. And hast thou brought up my life from corruption, death body's corrupted. Well, look at that cross-reference. Let's read it again, 22. And the fire was kindled in my anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the, the earth with, with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I'm going to write that one down right now. Jonah 2.6. That's a great cross reference there. The Lord just showed me that now. You couldn't get any clearer with that one. You could not with the with the with the Bible, the Old Testament, you could not with talking to a Jew and say you could not say that Jonah didn't go to hell with those two verses. You have to outright dis disbelieve God. Thank you, Lord. I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spread my arrows upon them. Deuteronomy 28. Why? Because other G-O-D-S. And if God's done it to Judah, what's he going to do to the church? The church is no better. Israel has the law and the word of God and the prophets. The church today, since Philadelphia, has the completed word through the Geneva Bible and the King James 1611 Bible. We are better as far as the Jews because we have all 66 books. And since we got all 66 books, man, we're in the worst place because we ought to know even more better than the Jews who only have the law. We can read Deuteronomy and we can read Joshua. We know what's going to happen. But the Jews are, are living as is being written. We learn by their examples, Paul says. Verse 24, they shall be burnt with hunger. Ooh, burnt with hunger. And devoured with burning heat. That's rash. And with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them. With the poison of serpents. That's the serpent. Serpents. Snakes. Of the dust. They're going to be bitten by snakes. One of them animals that comes out in Revelation. As the power of a scorpion. Vicious as serpent. The sword without and terror within. Shall destroy. War. Both the young man. And the virgin. The suckling also with the man of gray hairs. The old man. Even the old men are going to suffer. And we're in the generation now, even Chris. Oh, i got to have my guns. i got to have my guns. i got to have right. And when there are television programs about making knives and swords. And it's coming. If it's not already here. And all these weapons are being made are going to be used against Jews and those that believe God. 
They will be used by the Antichrist to guillotine against those that are for God. I said, God speaking, I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, least the adversary should behave, that's the first time, behave shows up themselves strangely. Son, behave yourself. No, 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 no. At least they should say, our hand is high. And the Lord has not done all this. For they are a nation void of counsel. They don't have the Bible. They don't believe it. Neither is there any understanding that they don't believe Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, you know, in the New Testament. And oh, what counsel there is by Jesus Christ and saving grace. Well, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. That's tribulation. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to fight? Except their rock, capital R, had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up. For their rock, small r, is not as our rock, capital R. There's a group of people that say Peter is their rock. And they say when Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church, they say that is Peter. I say it's Jesus Christ. Their Peter is not my Jesus. And their Peter is even another Peter, because that would not be the Apostle Peter. Even our enemies themselves being judges. So the enemies against those that do right are going to say, hey, yeah, that's what they said. That's what they believed. For their vine is the vine of Sodom. Ooh. You get grapes off a of vine. Sodomite grapes. And the uh, fields of Gomorrah, your, your fields are of sodomy, wickedness, destroyed by God. Their grapes are grapes of gall. You don't want to eat them. And their clusters are bitter. Unnatural grapes. Unworthy grapes. They are sure not the grapes of Israel, and yet that church will claim the promises of Israel. Their wine, oh, here's wine, is a poison of dragons. And at their Lord's Supper, they have real wine, real intoxicated wine. And the cruel venom of ass, that's the first time ass show up. And what God says about that mass and about their wine, it's dragon poison. It's venom of snakes, of ass, the, a very vicious snake in this region that we're reading about. Death almost instantaneously. That's how the Lord describes the, the Catholic Church's mass. Their wine, their rock is not it's, that's not mine. My juice is pure grape juice. My rock is Jesus Christ. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance. There's where Paul quotes it from, and recompense. God, their foot shall slide in due times. You can't get no footing when your foot is sliding, like on ice. You're bound to fall. For the day of their calamity, that's the first time that word shows up, is at hand. And the things that shall come upon them make haste. Deuteronomy 28. For the Lord shall judge his people. The Jewish people. The Lord, the Lord shall judge his church, too. And repent himself for his servants when he sees that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. Look how what look how low Israel is going to get from their sins. They're going to come to absolutely powerless, hopeless. That's going to happen, has already happened over uh, Adolf Hitler, which God gave him power and came out, but that's going to happen under the, the Antichrist too. And he, God, shall say, where are thy G-O-D-S? Where are they? They're rock, small r, in whom they trusted. Where are those gods? How much help are they doing you? 
Huh? What's Asterisk doing for you? What's Baal doing for you? Why is your city destroyed? Why has my temple been destroyed? Why are you in a place called Babylon? Why are you worshiping all these gods? What happened to those gods? Where are they? Huh? Where are they? What can Mary do for you? What can Allah do for you? Nothing. Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices. They gave all their fat that was supposed to go to God, Leviticus, they gave it to the false gods. And drank the wine of their drink offerings. They took what belonged to God, they gave it to devils. That's why God was jealous. Churches have given, buildings have been dedicated over the years to God the Father and the Son Jesus Christ, and they are giving it over to the world. They are giving it to sodomy. They're giving it to Gomorrah. They have even filled them with alcohol that were once given to God in Jesus Christ. The churches are failing. They're allowing Satan in and not Jesus. Let them rise up and help you. How can they help you? How can they rise up if there are no gods at all? They have no life. And be your protection. See now that I... God, even I, God, and me, and there is no God with me. Look at look at God in heaven sitting down. You look. I don't see no gods. And Job one and Job two says that Satan goes up before God. And God says, I don't see no gods at all. I kill. God says, and I make alive. All the doctors resuscitated me. They brought no God did. I make alive. I wound. Ooh, look at God saying that. And I heal. God is in charge of death and life and your wounds and being healed. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Whoever you worship, whoever you depend, if it's not God the Father and not the Son, Jesus Christ, they're not going to help you. It's an end of miserable. And then you'll die and end up in hell with the gods that you believed on. And they won't get you out of hell. For I lift up my hand, God speaking, to the heaven. And say, I live forever. Anything that is not of God and that is God will be cast off in the lake of fire that burns forever. Revelation 20. Including the G-O-D-S's. If I wet thy glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, second advent, I will render vengeance to my enemies and will reward them that hate me. Second advent. That sword that comes out of me, Jesus' mouth. Glittering. I will make my arrows drunk with blood. Death. I, and my sword shall devour flesh. That with the blood of the slain and the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. That's the second advent. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people. And he will avenge the blood of his servants, second advent, and will render vengeance to his adversaries, and will be merciful unto his land, that's Jesus sitting in the land of Israel, and to his people. That's the millennium. And Moses came and spake all the words of the song in the ears of the people. And he and Hosea, there's Joshua, he's got three names. Joshua's got three names. Here's Hosea. Je, if you put a J-E in front of that, that's Jehovah. What's Hosea? Save. Joshua, Jehovah saves. The son of Nun. And Moses made an end of all speaking. All the words to all Israel. And this would be his last final words. He's got one more thing to say, one more chapter, then he dies. And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children, not your pastors, not your priests, you. 
Christians. It is your responsibility to raise your children and teach them. Who knows? You might have a Sunday school teacher with a full man saying, they're going to heaven say number one. They may teach you things about pirates. They may have your children change their names for fun. To observe to do all the words of this law. And that's not Christian. But there are many things in the law we can do as Christians that would be proper and polite. But, I mean, excuse me, for it is, for it is not a vain thing for you to do right, teach your children right. That's not vain. Because it is your life. The law is the life. The law showed me I was a sinner, and since the law showed me I was a sinner, that the wages of sin is death, now I acknowledge I'm a sinner, I can receive the, the gift of God, Jesus Christ, because the law showed me who I was and what I am. And through this thing, ye shall prolong your days in the land, Jewish, whether ye go over Jordan to possess it, children of Israel. And the Lord spake unto Moses that same Self same day saying, Okay, Moses is finished now. God steps in. Get thee up to the mountain of uh, Rebum, unto Mount Nebo. So Mount Nebo is in a mount in Mount Abram. There are mountains in mountains, which is the land of Moab. Quite interesting. That over against Jordan, I mean Jericho, and behold the land of Cana. Which I give unto the children of Israel for a possession. And die in the mount whither thou goest up. And be gathered unto thy people, Abraham's bosom. As Aaron thy brother died in Mount Hor. And was gathered unto his people. Now it's interesting, it says thy people and then it says his people. Because... Now here's the reason why you're going to die and not go in that land. And we brought that to the rock again. Did I make notes here? It's funny how it mentions the rock, capital R. And then at the close of this chapter about the rock, capital R, Moses, you smoked that rock twice. Talking about the capital R, you're not going in. You trespass against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Meribah. Kadesh, that's where the rock he smote it twice, in the wilderness of Zin, because ye sanctify me not in the midst of the children of Israel. He smote the rock twice, yet thou shalt see the land, how he does that, before thee. So when before Moses died, he's going to see that land. He's not going in it. But thou shalt not go thither into the land, unto the land which I give the children of Israel. We got one more, two more chapters of Moses' life.